And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the Cult of Barnacle Bay, or it's a new wander story. Well, this is the first game from the Panda Cult Games. Uh, some of the folks at Panda Cult Games came from Simon, and you can tell when you look at this game, which was kickstarted last year, it certainly looks like a Simon game, from the amazing miniatures to the dice combat to a lot of different things. What kind of makes this game stand out a bit is the theming of it. So Barnacle Bay, a nice peaceful anamorphic town with the different animals going on, and the sea invades, and this something is causing creatures to morph into sea things. So you mix a bear with a shark, and now you have a bear shark, and you mix otters with some squid thing, and now you got otter anacles or whatever they are. So it's like a mix of these animals, which I know people get excited about that sort of thing. People like cute miniatures and animals. And at its heart, this is a cooperative dungeon crawl where you and several other people are going to go on missions and fight monsters. There's a lot of those out there. How does this one stand up? Let's take a look. To play the game, you're going to use a campaign book where it will tell you basically how to put a scenario together. There's a story that t introduces you to the game. And then you'll play a scenario. A scenario also, you often have multiple encounters. So, for example, in this initial encounter, you need to get to the stairs or this door, which will then take you to encounter two. And then encounter two, you need to get to the end thing here to finish the, the round out. And so it will have your story at the end of a story. It will then, you decide what you do next, essentially, and then it will take you to a new scenario. And there's a lot of different scenarios here as you go through the book. And so you'll build these scenarios. This is not an actual scenario. This is just me putting some stuff on the table. You build them with these large and small square discs. So there's a bunch of large ones out here, but there's smaller ones too that you will place in various spots on the board. And then you'll populate it with maybe bad guys. So there's different bad guys that will come out. Bad guys will often come out at different spawn points and there'll be various spawn points that are on the board depending on things. And there are spawn cards that you will draw and you'll look basically at the highest level of any of your characters and that's what will spawn out on the board. The enemies themselves are going to have different stats based on the, the level of the game that you're playing. So if you're playing level one, they're fairly easy, but as time gets by, these grunts get harder and harder. Uh, they have an attack that they're going to do. Uh, this is how much health they have, and this is how much of your attack they automatically block. Let's take a look at your characters, though, the heroes. So each player is going to pick one of the heroes. We have Tank the Guardian, who in one of the most obvious namings ever. He's uh, a tank. There's also Kyra and Roland and Ibexis and Finn the Ranger. These are the ones that come in the starting set. They have five different levels. Uh, every time you go up a level, you will get various bonuses. Um, as you'll, you'll notice here at level two, you get plus one action, which is a big deal. Everyone only has two actions, but once you go up, you get these. You're going to keep track of the experience that you get, which is mostly from killing monsters here. Whenever you pass and go up to another level, two, three, four, and five, a couple things happen. Everyone else gets a little bit of experience, so you kind of boost the whole party, and you'll spawn more monsters depending on what the symbol is there. This will show you your uh, life. This shows you how many dice you roll on defense and how many uh, and, and other things that you're going to be using, stats that you'll be using over the course of the game. Players will start with their starting gear. So, for example, Tank here starts with his hammer which is going to give him three dice on an, a melee attack, and this gives him plus one defense. You'll see that both of these use one hand. If I had a double-handed thing, you just put it here in the middle. And as the game goes by, you'll find more and more equipment, which you can put. Some of them will replace your weapons, and other ones you can put here. Like here, I got Mighty Gloves, plus one attack, Scale Helm, plus one defense, plus one defense, etc. In this game, you're going to be attacking creatures a lot either through melee or through ranged attack. You'll roll a certain number of dice, and in melee you're trying to roll these symbols. In ranged you're trying to roll these symbols. Uh, when you roll, when someone attacks you, you roll the, you're trying to roll these defensive symbols. 
And then there's this burst symbol that works on melee or ranged. And not only does it work, and, and defense, it works on all three of them, but it lets you ro roll another die, which if it's also a burst, lets you continue to roll. So there's always a chance that you'll be able to fight or block something off. Here's the initiative board, and there's also morale here. You'll have a morale tracker, which if it, every time someone dies, essentially, you get them, they come back to life, essentially, but you, you'll lose a morale. Once all your morale's gone, you've lost a scenario. On this initiative track, you're gonna be shuffling cards that show both characters and a different type. So these are the brute types, the, the bear sharks, if you will, if it happens to be the scenario that they're in. And this is the order that they go in. If you use the other side, depending on where you are, you will get a bonus. Like anyone here gets an extra die for attack, gets an extra movement, extra die for defense. And one of the actions that players can do is they can fall back, which lets them go all the way to the end of the track or move to the front of the track too. Now, enemies were always gonna attack the person at the front of the track, so you need to think about that. But also, as you move around, your bonuses will change. If you defeat a whole monster group, they will change. So when it's your turn, you'll get two actions, unless you get up to a certain level, you have three actions. Uh, you can move, you can attack, you can trade items with somebody else. There's various things that you can do. And, um, and so you're mostly trying to attack and, and kill the enemy. And when the enemy goes, they are going to basically, if they can't see you, they don't do anything. But if they can see you on the board, they will move and try to attack, again, the person who is farthest up on the initiative track. There are also sometimes you think cards on the board where you might flip them over and find treasure, or you might find an event. And when you have an event, there is a whole deck of event cards. You flip them over, there's good ones and bad ones. Sometimes they cause you to check your knowledge or something, you'll roll and see what happens. And you'll roll dice equal to your knowledge and depending on what you roll, something might good or bad might happen to you. Um, sometimes you'll find, you know, here's just a trap you know, the four beneath your feet starts crumbling, shiny yet slimy. So there's all sorts of events that you might run into. And it's possible that there's a very specific card you're looking to. These will be shuffled and placed down. And that might be a spot you need to find on the board. All the boards are double-sided. So you have these underground type boards and then something, you know, here's a beautiful garden. And on the other side, it's anything but beautiful. And you're just going to go back and forth until someone wins. I know that I'm kind of simplifying the game, but that really is the simplicity of this game. So the game comes with two big trays that hold all the different miniatures and cards and things and the dice. The miniatures themselves are awesome. Of course, this is the selling point of the game, the fact that it comes with a bear shark. But you can see that the miniatures are really well done. That's the bear shark. Here we got this gigantic beast here, which is pretty neat. And then in the trays here, you can see all the different characters, the heroes themselves. Now, of course, as with anything, these guys would look a whole lot better if they were painted, but they do. They're really nice miniatures, and I'm pretty happy all around with how they look. Everything else is pretty good. The Hero boards are a little thin, and I'm not a huge fan of having a slider around the outside, but I like the art. Even if the, I, the only thing I could say is the game feels slightly unpolished with its graphic design, um, especially when it comes to the, these cards, the, the, the story cards. They're, they're okay, and they, they look fine and everything, but they just feel a little off. It's not a big deal. Everything else looks great, though. And overall, the production here is top-notch. Don't you wish you could be a bear shark? Well, actually, there is an expansion that lets you. Uh, one of the, the heroes, you can be one. But this game, I'll start out by saying I like it. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It feels a bit amateurish in the production. Uh, from the, the writing, which is... Decent. I wouldn't say the writing is great to, like I said, some of the graphic design. And then if you take that on top of the fact that if you play this, you would think Simon did it. There's nothing I don't think that's necessarily, I shouldn't say there's nothing, but there's very little that's unique. We got the dice with the exploding side. We have good guys going and then the bad guys move programmable around and you fight them and you go around and accomplish missions. We've seen a lot of this before. 
The one bright shining thing that I felt was different and unique was the initiative, especially if you use the advanced side, which to me is the always side, because why would you not use it? It's really fascinating because you'll say, I'll, do, I'll move here. I'll move around to the bottom or to the top, moving all, shuffling the creatures around. And of course that gives the bad guys an extra attack, but they can't see us right now. And it feels like there's a lot of interesting, cool strategy as you do that. Uh, and I really like that part at all about the game. That's easily my favorite part is manipulating that initiative track to get the bonuses and also decide what turn order you're going to go in. And that's neat. I felt like that was cool. Sure, initiative is random at first, but you can kind of manipulate it over the course of a mission to get it to where you want to be. Other than that, the combat, I mean, it's combat that I love. I love exploding dice. I think that's a cool thing where you roll it and you could, you know, you, I only have one die on defense, but I blocked it. It worked. And you'll have those stand-up moments in the game. It's like, wow, attack, oh, I get more dice and more dice and why I took down the big giant creature. The big bad guys have their own deck of cards, the big ones, you know. Uh, and the, the combat of the enemies isn't really inspired. It's just kind of, they move around and shoot and attack you and stuff. The board, the water uh, has some terrain. The game itself is, has a fairly big rule book, but, I, mean, I shouldn't say fairly big, but it's, it's big here. I mean, how many pages are in it? Uh, 39 pages of rules, which seems like a ton of rules, but it's really not that hard, especially if you played a type of this game before. So the question is then, what draws you to this game? Because like I said, I like it. Well, there's a couple things. One, I really like the theme. I like the whole bear shark mixing things. It's a lot of fun. The theme is cool. And it comes out a little bit in the writing and in the event cards. And it feels, I like getting your character and buffing them up. And I like following the adventure. Although you could easily play a one-off adventure with this. It's not hard at all. Uh, I also like the combat system and everything, even though a lot of the mechanisms in here, a lot, are not unique, save the initiative track, the, the sum of the game is more than its parts. Yes, this is very similar to Arcadia Quest and things like that in a lot of ways, but at the same time, it feels really good. It just, it, the, whole, the whole game runs really smoothly, and it's just fun. It's sometimes fun is hard to quantify, but in this one, fun is in the working together to get some equipment and go around and fight stuff. You want to kick the door in, you want to smash enemies and move around. This is the kind of game that you're going to enjoy playing as you work together. And it seems like the, the starting five characters all feel balanced. Tank is this beast here. You know, he's the guy that, that soaks up the damage. You got a magician who can hurl a lot of damage, but at the same time... You want to make sure that they stay in the back and, you know, you got the thief who can move around really quickly. And so it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of the same archetypes, but they, again, they work in this situation. So if you've been looking at this like, oh, I don't know, I, I found it to be very enjoyable. It's one I'm adding to the Dice Tower Library. It's fun. I would pick it over a lot of other dungeon crawls just because of how simple and easy it is. I don't, even though there's this big rule book, I don't find myself looking stuff up in it all the time. So I like it. The Cult of Barnacle Bay. Dice Tower Judgment approved! <laughs> <laughs>